Hi friends. Now after studying the Indus River system, we will do some of the smaller type that is the Indus Water Treaty so that you have a basic idea of what this Indus Water Treaty is and also one of the some of the major hydroelectric power projects which are in the news, which can be in the news, which are important that will do so that they will help you in the preliminary examination. This may also help you in the main examination. Indus Water Treaty as such is the topic which is more important for the main examination. This topic is more important for main examination. While the major trip projects on Indus Water River are more important for preliminary examination. For the prelims examination. So, let us study what is the first initially we will study the Indus Water Treaty System. That is the treaty system which is between India and Pakistan when the two new countries were, when the Pakistan was created after the, uh, after the end of British rule. We will look at the background of the Indus Water Treaty System. So, at the time of inter independence, a boundary line was drawn between the two states, the, between the two countries, not the two states, between the two countries. That is the two new independent countries which were born. It was drawn by which person? We have done that. It is known as a Radcliffe Line. And this Radcliffe Line passed through the Indus Basin region. I am not saying only through the Indus River. What is Indus Basin? Look at the first lecture. Basin means? The entire river, Uska tributaries, Uska tributaries and thus this entire is known as Indus Basin. The entire catchment area of a river is known as an Indus Basin. Tributaries of Indus, Jhelum for example or Satlaj, Satlaj ka tributaries. Uske tributaries ka sub tributaries is what is made up of Indus Basin. And therefore it drew the line, it, it divided the Indus Basin also. Water is a scarce resource fresh water is becoming a scarce resource. Water is a resource and the fresh water is becoming a scarce resource. Why? Because we are not utilizing this water properly. Over exploitation, groundwater pollution, river pollution, sea pollution, this all is affecting the amount quality of water we are using and water is required, fresh water is required for irrigation, to create food, to produce food. It is used for day-to-day -day activities and it is also required for drinking. So, as a result, water disputes are, are the future disputes. They or Even the water disputes are there also, but as we go into the future, when water is becoming a scarce resource, when there is a global climate change and its effect in the decreasing pattern of the rainfall or fluctuations in the amount of rainfall, both internally as well as internationally, there will be increasing water disputes internally between the two states, internationally between the two countries. Indus River is an international river. It originates in the Tibet. It flows through China, uh, flows through India, and then it goes into the Pakistan region. Can you see China and India? Yeah, India. Uh, most of the tributaries of River Indus originate in India. India, may this are the re Indus is a perennial river. It receives large amount of rainfall also but it receives most of the water from the snow melt but when it goes to pakistan while when it enters the pakistan and it when finally it goes through punjab plains then to sindh and then to the arabian sea you see it enters arid and the semi arid regions punjab plains of india and punjab plains of pakistan both are agriculturally very important Punjab plains of Pakistan, similar to the Punjab plains of India, is the food basket of Pakistan. It is the political powerhouse of Pakistan. It is a, it, it is having maximum amount of representation and bargaining power. What you learn as a, as a pressure group in the paper two polity may you will learn it as a pressure group. So, as a result, Indus Water Treaty is an important treaty. Why? Because there was a dispute between after independence between because of the division of the Indus Basin. Therefore, obviously, the Punjab region of Pakistan, there were many irrigation canal supplies, many irrigation systems, many power projects which used to be which were dependent on the Indus water, but now 
that indus water that they the the company were left in indian territories so the irrigation projects on which the pakistani part of punjab punjab pakistani punjab dependent that irrigation projects were left to india and as a result there was a need for indus water treaty so we can see at the time of independence a boundary line between the two newly created independent countries pakistan and india was drawn right across the indus basin leaving pakistan as lower riparian state what do you mean by lower riparian state lower riparian state means if this is india and this is where the indus river is originating pakistan lies at the lower part and therefore it is an example of an lower riparian state as a result the as a result the pakistan uh, irrigation supplies on which punjab that in the part of pakistan had been completely dependent when left in india so see here pakistan is a lower riparian state for indus because india lies at the higher part brahmaputra mein india is a lower riparian state china is in the higher part so, bangladesh is lower riparian state as compared to ganga and brahmaputra as compared to india so higher riparian state and the lower riparian state thus a dispute arose between the two nations negotiations were held and this is what is important that who held the negotiations the negotiations were held under international bank for reconstruction and development what we call this bank as we call this bank as world bank and resulted into signing of indus water treaty in 1960 what you have to remember here world bank was the negotiator for indus water treaty of 1960 world bank was the negotiator for the indus water treaty of 1960 then now let us look at the indus river system what i have told you in june cars run bit slow indus jhelum chenab ravi bias and satluj and satluj so these are the different types of this are the different types of the rivers which originate in the these are the different rivers which th this this is how the major tributaries of indus river system is and i have told you how is this this is from northeast to southwest that is in jun kar run so so the first three rivers india indus jhelum and uh, jhelum and chenab that is the river indus river jhelum and river chenab this three rivers according to the indus water treaty now tell me whether these are west flowing western rivers or eastern rivers as we compare to, as we compare it to india they lie in the north western part so we call them as a western rivers while the remaining three rivers that is bias ravi bias and satluj these three are the eastern rivers when we compare it with india south eastern river now according to the indus water treaty western rivers have been given to pakistan while the eastern rivers have been given to india now do do in why because because you see the india now this this the thing about the indus water treaty i am leaving you here with something to think of is pakistan really interested in the kashmir because of the religious reason yeah pakistan is more important interested in kashmir and it wants some 
part of Kashmir because the major water resources of Pakistan, you can see in the map, are originating in India, originating in the Jammu Kashmir region. And is it why it is also, and it, is it why it is so much interested in Pakistan uh, in the Kashmir? And is this the reason why Pakistan is using the religious angle to, we can say, divert the Kashmir issue on the religious lines? Because religion is opium for masses. This is what religion is the weak point for the masses. So, the uh, the uh, is really Pakistan interested in religion or is Pakistan interested in securing its water resources, especially for the Punjab region, especially for this region that is the Punjab region. Why I told you, I must have told you most of the politicians, almost all prime ministers of, Pan of Pakistan are from the Punjab region. Each and every army chief, uh, one of the most important pressure group is from the Punjab region. And therefore, Pakistan is using a terrorist and the militancy as an angle for securing Kashmir. Because if Kashmir is with Pakistan, then it does not have to worry about the water resources which, which, which originate in the Kashmir region. On the other hand, if the Kashmir till the time Kashmir lies with India, in the case of a dispute, in the case of a dispute, India being an upper riparian state, it always has an upper hand to block this water resources and thus cause floods or drought in Pakistan if it f follows such a foreign policy. But India is a soft country. India is not following such a foreign policy. In fact, it is, it is said that the Indus Water Treaty is favoring Pakistan a lot and there is a time to renegotiate the Indus Water Treaty because most of these rivers are entering, are, are originating in India, enter through India and India can utilize just 20% of water of this Indus River while rest 80% of the water is being utilized by Pakistan. In fact, I think the time has come hard to renegotiate the Indus Water Treaty and show India is a hard power. Or then the second option both these countries are is to live in peace, have a mutual trust, have a mutual agreement rather than stoking the militancy, rather than stoking the Kashmir issue. But international diplomacy, we, I do not know, it is not my subject also, why I am just giving you a food for thought here that the different angle for the Kashmir issue because and that is why, is it true? Yes. If you see Azhar Masood, if you see most of the people whom are in the terrorist most wanted list of India, they all instigate the Pakistani people, not on more on the Kashmir issue, but on the water issue. Azhar Masood, I guess his name is, he, he instigates the people in Punjab saying that, so India may cause droughts in the Pakistan during the times of need. How? By stopping the flow of water by constructing dams over here. Or in India, if it opens the flood gates of the dams, it opens the gates of the dams, it can cause floods even in the Pakistan region. So, you can see large scale destruction without physical war. That is the that is always the advantage with the upper riparian state. So we can either try to live in peace or we can just keep on fighting and distrust can be there. I won't go too much into detail, but let us look at the Indus Water Treaty here. So the Indus River system, the Indus system of river comprises of three eastern rivers, Ravi, Bias and Satlaj and their tributaries and the three western rivers of Indus, Jhelum, Chenab and the Uska tributaries. As I told you, as per the provisions of the treaty, India can use only 20% of the total water carried by the Indus River. In fact, what UPSC had asked that is... Is this a right time? To renegotiate. The Indus Water Treaty. To renegotiate the 
इंडस वाटर ट्रीटी टू रीनेगोशिएट द इंडस वाटर ट्रीटी now let us look at the other provisions i hope that you save this as a screenshot or you may write it down whatever it is according to this treaty the waters of three western rivers that is jhelum chenab and indus were allocated to pakistan and those of the three eastern rivers that is ravi bias and satluj were allocated to india obviously because this rivers are originating the indus river uske baad jhelum river chenab river this all are originating in india. Yeah. not entirely all the waters will be allocated to pakistan we can construct some of the dams on the in on the three rivers that is indus jhelum and chenab so india cannot use this india cannot Const India cannot fully utilize this water, but India can construct some of the projects which are putting some restrictions, which are been restricted. With some restrictions, India can utilize the water of these three rivers. That is, India can use this for domestic water use. India can use this water for irrigation, but with some construction, with some restrictions, India can use this for hydroelectric power generation, but cannot save. divert and control the water of this river we cannot control or divert the water but we can use this water for generation without affecting the flow of water of this rivers and such a projects are known as run off river river projects i have told you see what are this this projects you you here you will find that in the next slide you will find run of the river projects but come to the first slide here these are known as the run of river projects that means india can utilize india can construct run of river projects i am writing this run of river projects on three western rivers with some restrictions obviously with some restrictions now what are these restrictions india can construct certain restrictions about the water utilizations were placed on india which is the upper riparian state now what are this restriction one restriction is india has not been allowed to build storage on the rivers where water has been allocated to pakistan which river ka water has been allocated to pakistan indus ka jhelum ka and chenab ka i have shown this to stethoscope like thing because chandra and bhaga restrictions have also been imposed on the extension of irrigation development in india obviously less significant restrictions have been placed on pakistan being a lower riparian state and therefore i said that time to renegotiate the treaty the treaty is it successful yes more or less it has been successful by because it provides for certain institutional arrangement what are the institutional arrangements institutional arrangements means the arrangements which have been made by an institution by a treaty by a government that in case something goes wrong you have a correct operating procedure you have a sop that is standard operating procedure to follow so the treaty provides for certain institutional arrangement a permanent indus commission consisting of a commissioner for each india and for pakistan has been set up and there are periodical meetings and exchanges between the two sides now this is about the indus water treaty you remember this is important about the indus water treaty for preliminary examination kya yaad rakhoge for preliminary examination you will remember the western rivers consisting of indus jhelum and chenab 
are given to Pakistan. India can construct only run on river project on this river. Only run of river projects What are this run of river projects? This are the projects which does not affect the flow of a water. Run of river projects here. While the three eastern rivers, Ravi, Bias and Satlaj are given to India. This is what you remember here. This are given to India. Now, let us look at some of the important dams which have been in the news because maybe because India according to Pakistan India is violating the Indus water treaty or according to India it is not violating the Indus water treaty. The first the first dam which you should know is the Kishan Ganga hydroelectric power project or the Kishan Ganga dam. Now the Kishan Ganga dam is a dam on river Kishan Ganga. You know that this is the river Jhela it flows through a lake which is known as an Oxbow Lake, which is known as Wooler Lake. Then it cuts through the Pir Panjal Range. This is the Pir Panjal Range. After that, uh, we have done a tributary of River Jhelum, that is the River Kishan Ganga. River Kishan Ganga. This is Kishan Ganga River. This is Jhelum River. So Kishan Ganga is a Kishan Ganga Dam is a dam in the Jammu Kashmir. Obviously, which state? This is the Kashmir region. In fact, to be precise, the state is Jammu Kashmir, but this region is Kashmir Valley. So it is a it is a Kishan Ganga HEP is a project on River Kishan Ganga in the Jammu Kashmir. Now remember, Kishan Ganga River is also known as Neelam River in which state? In which country? In the country of Pakistan. So it is known as Kishan Ganga in India, but if it goes to Pakistan, it is known as Neelam River. Kishan Ganga is a tributary of River Jhelum. So this is the first project, Kishan Ganga HEP on the River Kishan Ganga or River Jhelum. Uh, uh, direct, indirectly River Jhelum because Kishan Ganga is a tributary of River Jhelum in the in India. It has been contested by Pakistan, but overall it has been, the project has been awarded to India saying that India has not violated the rights you do, are not required to go that much into detail. Second project which is located on river Jhelum is Uri, project on Jhelum. Again in the Baramulla region of Jammu and Kashmir or you remember Jammu and Kashmir only. So remember on river Jhelum, You have two projects. One is Kishan Ganga. And the second is Uri. Uri HP on River Jhelum. How to remember it? Remember it somewhat. Make your own shortcuts. I won't give you too many shortcuts. Remember it somewhat. Kishan Jail say Udi. Say Udi. That is Hindi word Kishan Jail say Udi. That is Kishan Ganga is our river, Uri is a river, and J is Jhelum. So this is why if the question comes Kishan Jail say Udi. Who Jail say Udi? Kishan Jail say Udi. Kishan Ganga on Jhelum River, Udi on Jhelum River. The Third important HEP is the Baglihar Dam. Baglihar Dam or Baglihar Hydroelectric Power Projects is again a run of river project on Chenab River. Pakistan has objected to it in 2005, but World Bank appointed Professor Raymond Lafitte, a Swiss civil engineer, to educate the difference. Obviously, the World Bank has said, has now awarded the project to India
with some changes with some minor changes looking into pakistan's objection but may, most of the pakistan's objection were found to be baseless why because india had not violated the terms of treaty so kishan ganga jhelam udgai jhelam uri hydroelectric power jhelam bagli har on chenab bagli har on chenab remember chenab bagal mein hai this statement chenab bagal mein hai means chenab side mein hai chenab bagli har then the other dam is the thin dam see the name name looks european or chinese name but it is not a chinese name thin dam and this dam ka jo reservoir which is collected it is known as a ranjit sagar reservoir thin dam or ranjit sagar reservoir is on river ravi in the gurdaspur district of punjab it is on the ravi river in the gurdaspur district of of punjab so ravi ranjit sagar r r and the ranjit sagar ka dam is known as thin dam where which state punjab because upsc will ask you state where it is located and river where it is located and generally agar reservoir ka name it is asked so you will have to remember it in the three counts state kaun sa hai what we have done kishan ganga jhelam jammu kashmir uske baad uri jhelam jammu kashmir kishan ganga actually on river kishan ganga baglihar चेनाब चेनाब बगल में है बगलिहार दिस इज हाउ यू रिमेंबर चेनाब बगल में है दिस रिमेंबर सो चेनाब बगलिहार प्रोजेक्ट स्टेट जम्मू कश्मीर थीन डैम रंजित सागर लेक और रंजित सागर रिजर्वायर आर आर ऑन रिवर रावी देन कम्स दूल हस्ती हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर प्रोजेक्ट दूल हस्ती हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर प्रोजेक्ट अगेन इट इज being built by india on the chenab river in the jammu kashmir jammu and the kashmir region so chenab bagal mein so baglihar chenab dhul dhul hasti aur dur hai that you remember chenab also has dur hai bhi bagal mein bhi hai that is dur hasti is also on river chenab and baglihar is also on river chenab then there is a small hydroelectric power project known as ratle hydroelectric power project on chenab again in the state of jammu kashmir so dul hasti on chenab ratle in chenab and and baglihar on chenab but dul hasti is important and baglihar is important that is why i gave i am giving you a statement chenab dur bhi hai dul hasti wala dur and bagal mein bhi hai that is baglihar wala bagal i guess you even my friends from the the non hindi speaking states are comfortable with this much hindi so the next is the chamera dam remember the chamera dam is mera ravi mera is is located on river ravi near the town of dalhousie you don't have to remember dalhousie but why i am giving you the name of dalhousie so that dalhousie being a very beautiful hill station a very popular hill station you will remember chamera dalhousie ravi and which state you will remember chamera on himachal pradesh in the himachal pradesh so uh, ravi we have done two dams one is the thin dam one is thin dam and second is chamera dam
रिमेंबर रावी का वन डैम इज इन पंजाब एंड द अदर वन इज चामेरा इज इन हिमाचल प्रदेश चामेरा इज इन हिमाचल प्रदेश नियर डल हाउस then the one of the biggest dam is the bakra nangal dam one of the it was called by the temple of modern india by our first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru now when it was built it was the highest dam in india it was one of the highest it was the highest dam in india now after the coming up of tehri dam on the river bhagirathi ganga it has remained it has become the second highest dam but on which river bakra nangal dam is on the satluj river in bilaspur district of himachal pradesh in the bilaspur region of himachal pradesh now this is one remember bakra nangal dam ka location is himachal pradesh but surprisingly it's it is a joint venture between punjab haryana and rajasthan so bhakra nangal on satluj river satluj or satluj joint venture between पंजाब हरियाणा एंड राजस्थान रिमेंबर दिस अगेन एंड अगेन इट इज अ जॉइंट वेंचर बिटवीन पंजाब हरियाणा एंड राजस्थान दो इट इज लोकेटेड इन द स्टेट ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश बाकरा नांगल डैम द स्टेट ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश हैज नथिंग टू डू विद द भाकरा नांगल डैम it supplies it is a joint venture between the state of repeat with me bhakra nangal dam is a joint venture between the state of punjab haryana and rajasthan himachal pradesh has nothing to do bhakra nangal punjab haryana and rajasthan many times upsc has asked this question and it may ask you in the future also it is a joint venture between two remember it is the second highest dam in india after tehri dam that means the tehri dam is the highest that is why i am giving you this nangal dam actually there are two dams one is bhakra nangal and the other one is bhakra dam and the other is nangal dam but it is jointly referred as bhakra nangal dam but remember nangal dam is another dam downstream of bhakra dam however sometimes both the dams together are called bhakra nangal dam though they are separate dams is it the largest dam in the terms of quantity of water in india we generally think so yes but no it is not today it is not because there have been many big hp projects which have come up in fact in the terms of quantity of water it is the third largest reservoir in india the first being the indira sagar dam in madhya pradesh and don't remember with capacity and the second nagarjuna sagar the first in the terms of quantity of water how much quantity of water is there in the reservoir you can see this part which i am marking in the yellow color is the reservoir so in the terms of reservoir quantity how much which is the largest indira sagar on river narmada we will do it while doing river narmada nagarjuna sagar we will do it while doing river krishna nagarjuna sagar after that then the bhakra nangal dam comes bhakra nangal dam satluj river between three states punjab haryana and rajasthan though it is located in himachal pradesh himachal pradesh is not in the sharing or the benefits of bhakra nangal dam okay so this were the major hps of indus river one or two questions come so whatever this lecture is write it down short in the notes many people ask me about the attachment see attachments are i will give you the attachments but what is more important rather than the attachment is my lecture because what i teach in the class it does not is not reflected in the attachments attachments are superficial the main importance is you sit for the class this class like a physical class with your notebook and write it down or even if you are traveling somewhere you are listening to my lectures at least listen it very carefully and just jot down the points if possible if not 
then re repeat it listening to the lectures okay so thank you very much and we will meet with the future lectures until then enjoy your studies